I deem it a great honor and privilege to be with you this evening while we assemble here to commemorate a great visionary and futurist of our times, Sri Lanka Bimane Saathasi Clark. It is certainly inspiring to reflect on Saath at a time we as a nation have placed much emphasis on innovation, creativity, ingenuity and imagination in our thinking and performance in the achievement our goals in our national development drive. Ladies and gentlemen, every one of us has dreams. Every one of us has creative thinking. Every one of us has imagination. The personality that we are gathered here to commemorate this evening is one who shot to global frame as a visionary and futurist primarily because of his powers of imagination. Some of his imagination were within the realm of scientific plausibility and technological feasibility, while some were probably outside this realm at times. While the former took the scientists and engineers by surprise whenever the scientific plausibility or the technological feasibility of those imaginations were realized many years into future. The latter, which were confined to science fiction, kept on mesmerizing hundreds of thousands of devout fans worldwide. Any person undertaking a serious study of the historical evolution of global telecommunication is bound to be both fascinated and surprised upon encountering Saath's conceptualization of intercontinental, extraterrestrial radio communication via geostation satellites as far back as 1945. When it obviously sounded science fiction. In fact, there are other futurist predictions of Saath which have been far more scientifically possible, though not technologically feasible at the time of prediction, which I believe have been overshadowed by the popular prediction such as geostationary communication satellite and space elevator. One of the classic examples comes in the form of a prediction made during a magazine program of BBC titled Horizon in 1964, shortly after the first ever telecommunication satellite was realized. I think Professor Ranjit Perra mentioned about that. I would like to emphasize on this. I caught below some paras from his talk. Ladies and gentlemen, the technology development and application policy that we pursue is one of using it for the benefit of masses. I am pleased to note that the Arthur C. Clarke Institute had recently initiated a program to promote certain selected application of space technology among us the public agencies operating in the field of agriculture, irrigation, agrarian development, metrology, disaster management and census and statistics. This is happening with the assistance of the UNSCAP and the space agencies of some of the friendly nations in the region. I am glad that this year's Arthur C. Clarke Memorial Lecture is delivered by Professor Hugh Lin a leading authority in Asia on the subject of space technology applications. I wish to congratulate the chairman, the CEO, and the staff of ACCIMT for organizing this important event. I thank you. Our speaker this evening, Professor Hui Ling, uh, as you already heard, is the director of the Institute of Space and Earth Information Science of the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Chinese University of Hong Kong is, of course, uh, one of the leading universities in the world and uh, one of the top five universities in Asia. It's certainly one of the top most universities in China uh, in this area, in the area of space technology applications. Minister, Madam, Chairman, uh, I'm honored to receive the invitation come to your beautiful country. Uh, when I was young, I actually already know the site, Bandaranak Memory Hall, because at that time in Chinese mo movie, news always show the great friends of Chinese people and Bandaranak met by them. Um, I also have a very good you know, classmate when I was uh, as a PhD student in University at Buffalo in the United States. Bandu, he's also from uh, Sri Lanka. And actually, we worked together for my final uh, presentation of my PhD thesis. He's from computer science, I come from geography. We joined together 
to uh, introduce a new idea about the virtual geography environment together. I think uh, I should also thank him uh, for his uh, help because uh, he's actually a classmate, my wife, in the biology department. They work together for some uh, very interesting research. And uh, during the lunch time, my wife introduced him to me. And then suddenly he found my, my research is so interesting to him, then we work together. There's some kind of interesting you know, link uh, pe between people. I also very uh, impressed uh, for this uh, function here. Uh, you know, um, from minister to so many people, uh, would like to get together to commemorate the great person and uh, Professor Arthur Clarke. Uh, it's not only for you know uh, uh, remember this great person. The impress I receive is about your countries. You are pay attention to uh, this kind of uh, function to make making our dream to re realize our dream with science and technology. This reminds me when it's about 30 years ago when China survived from the chaos of the ch great ch uh, cultural revolution. And at uh, that time, the leader of our country, probably you know the name, Deng Xiaoping, he said, science and the technology is the first production, first production force. So remind that the whole country people pay attention to science, technology, and uh, respect uh, research, and from scholars, from uh, uh, people who make these kind of dreams. So that's something in the, uh, impressed me. And uh, here I would like to use the next one hour, maybe less than one hour, to, uh, to introduce what I did and what I saw, I think is uh, you know, very interesting uh, progress in my uh, field. And uh, Mr. Sanas reminded me, uh, people may join this function from different background. So I use not much technical jargon and also text. I try to use uh, pictures and uh, use uh, you know, simulation, uh, which can help us to stimulate, stimulate our thinking. And I tell you a little bit about the title of this talk today and try to link my uh, topic with the great person, um, the Professor Arthur Clarke, and his famous movie you know, about the, the Space Odyssey. So I try to you know, use geo-information technology as a legacy of the Space Odyssey. The great person, he gave us, you know, actually encourage us to dream I think a dream is very important to make us, you know, change the world. And uh, I joined this field actually in 19, 19, I should say 1974. Actually, it's a worker in my hometown. It's a Bureau of Surveying Mapping. And that time, and the later Premier Minister, uh, Prime Minister Zhou Enlai said, China needs modernization but suddenly find out we don't have enough map. And the whole country, the one to 50,000 scale map is not cover the whole country. And when people say we try to build a highway, real way the building, which you need maybe one to 5,000, even large scale maps, we don't have map. So the whole country start to build up the you know, provincial level of a surveying and mapping bureau. They tried to recruit me. I was at that time the coach of a valuable team in my hometown. And the director of the bureau tried to recruit some young people who can you know, uh, entertain those young people in the bureau. So they tried to recruit me you know, as a, a valuable team coach to the, uh, the team. And I asked them, what is this about you know, the surveillance mapping? Because I don't know, know nothing about that. They said that the photo, aero photogrammetry engineering. Then I asked, what is about the aero photogrammetry engineering? He said, that very you know, impressive to me, and even my parents said, that, that means we take an airplane, take photo, then make maps. 
Well, that makes me, okay, it sounds like high tech. So I joined and, uh, the bureau, but actually I went to the field, you know, do the field work to do the control works. I found out it's very difficult when I was uh, uh, in the field trip to collect data, to do the control. Not like now we do have a GPS. That time we use uh, you know, some kind of machine that use